it's Lynette with Charm Grammy Crochet. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I would like to wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day. Uh, today's video is about our trip to Bongi Creek yesterday. Um, Billy the Crafty Floridian, uh, Nancy from She's Got Yarn 2, um, uh, uh, Lynanne from Nina's Knots Crochet, and Cindy from Freeze Baby Free. Free, fiber, free, freeze, baby, fibers. <laughs> One of those. I'll get it right. I'll put it in the, anyway, y'all will be in the description box. Uh, we went to Boggy Creek and delivered our blankets yesterday. Your blankets yesterday. Um, and it was amazing. Boggy Creek is always amazing. So I've put together some video clips. I don't know if there'll be music um, added in. I've spent a lot of time trying to edit. So, um, I am not a videographer, I'm not an editor, I crochet for a living, <laughs> well not even for a living but for a hobby. <laughs> so uh, bear with the maybe a little sideways video sometimes, maybe not the perfect editing, um, but a good content. Uh, everyone that uh, participated, thank you so very, very much. And you can participate even if it's just by supporting and watching and encouraging everyone else uh, if you were unable. There was a prize drawing giveaway uh, and that's on Nancy's live. We did it live on Nancy's She's Got Yarn channel which will be, the channel will be linked. Um, I don't know if I can actually snatch that and add it to my video. We had trouble. Uh, so we did it as a live. I don't think I can add it into this video. Uh, and if I can, I really don't know how. So <laughs> let's go with that. Go watch Nancy's channel. If you won uh, a prize from me, I think three of my four people have already, uh, I gave away four prizes and I think three out of the four have already emailed me. So uh, anyway, watch for that. Uh, watch Nancy's if, if for nothing else and a lot of the content might overlap but I might have different content than she does in this video I am assuming that Billy and Lynn I have not looked because I spent all of my time editing it took me a long time uh, to edit this so um, just bear with me when you come in at the beginning of the pictures are uh, entering Boggy Creek and then there's some video footage and then there's some pictures and little captions and so uh, enjoy I hope you like it Thank you all so very much for all that you did. I get choked up just thinking about it. It means so much to Nancy and Billy and I that you have embraced and supported our cause because it means so much to the children. Seeing Boggy Creek and seeing uh, Jackie and Kimmy and uh, now Tom, we met Tom for the first time. You'll see him just really briefly in the video. Um, seeing them and hearing them talk about the camp and the kids and all that you do there is um, encouraging just to make you want to stay and do it some more. So please listen to what they say. Um, it will just make your donations means so much more to you. Okay, before I get too teary-eyed here, <laughs> I'm going to let you go to watch the video. So please enjoy, um, and I will see you guys in the next video, and thank you again so very much. Lots of them. <laughs> that is a full trailer of Afghans times. for the kids. It's not quite three times. Almost three times. Almost three times from last year. Very right. close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Wow. <laughs> Sue, so go over by uh, Nancy. Right? Some of the, nope. This oh, one's okay. all yeah, hers. One. This is all Billy. Oh. This is all me. Now you go, no, girl. Nancy, get in there by your mother. You are amazing people. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. From Canada. From Canada. We have blankets that have been donated from all over the world. Hold on. 
Literally. She was just watching YouTube and found it and then started donating? Friends of ours, uh, people that we've met on YouTube, okay, now people that the other side? people that have um, okay. joined because of our YouTube channels oh, and the Boggy God. Blanket oh. Drive. They're all sick. <laughs> they're either, or they're doctors. Or they're doctors. Oh yeah. They're carrying canes. Go 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 go. Go ahead. <laughs> Flowers. And Debbie picked this out. It's beautiful. Yes. Cute? So Debbie's in uh, Canada. Wow. Like, what is happening? So I, I got on my laptop and I went to YouTube and I started writing and then whoever it was, I think it may have been you or I can't remember, was like, well, Jacqueline and Kimmy are here. <laughs> and my yeah. husband's like, who's talking to you on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have no idea. And then we sat and watched the unboxing of all the Afghans for the next hour or so. It was amazing. <laughs> So uh, I'm honored uh, to, to be in front of you. So I'll go over to the patch, which is the building right next door, and that's our medical center, um, which is cool why we place. have books. It's called the patch. It's where you go to get patched up. And then we'll circle back around and head to a cabin out the back door for those who walk. And Kimmy, we've had a request perhaps for a golf cart for those. Yeah. So uh, we will make that work so we can get you all over to where the bears and Afghans and quilts are awaiting the arrival of children's and fa children and family members, children and family members. So, um, for those of you who have been here before, I appreciate your patience. There won't be a quiz. Uh, but it may be some things you've heard before. Um, and for those who are new, welcome. And uh, I hope to help you understand the magic that you are a part of. So, you are on 232 acres of land that was donated to us by what was at the time Florida Hospital because they thought nobody's ever going to live in Lake County, Florida. That's so far away. We'll just give you the land, right? Um, but now we have the land, which is great. And we back up to the Seminole State Forest. Um, why did they donate it to us? A little girl in Miami got cancer. And when she got cancer, her parents applied for her to attend this medical camp in Connecticut started by that actor guy named Paul Newman. And, yep, and it was free. And Jennifer got accepted and she went to camp. Um, in her parents' words, Jennifer came home a different little girl. And you can go to our website to read the full story about Jennifer. Um, and to tell you that phrase, she came home a different little girl, last year I had the opportunity to interview parents who have a son with epilepsy whose son came to Camp Boggy Creek and that journey. And that mother said to me, when Lucas came home, he came home a different little boy. So whatever magic happened in Connecticut for Jennifer, we are continuing here at Camp Boggy Creek. And Jennifer wanted to know, how come I had to go all the way to Connecticut? Why wasn't there a camp in Florida? And that was the catalyst for some key people, the most famous of which are Paul Newman and General Schwarzkopf. But there are seven other people who were critical to raising $26 million and build, building what is now the only fully medically supervised camp in the state of Florida for children with chronic illness. Uh, when our gates opened in 1996, we had no idea that almost 30 years later, over 90,000 kids and their family members will have come through our gates. Yeah, right. thank you. I did it all alone. No, <laughs> um, so, uh, what happens? Well, kids who have one of the 15 different illnesses we serve can hear about us in any way. It can be from their doctor, it could be from a child life specialist, it could be because you were talking to a friend at dinner and they said, what is this magical place that is free and is medically safe for children? Um, once they go through the application process, our team makes sure that camp is the right fit for them. And they can either come on a family retreat weekend with their whole family, and those programs run from September to April, or they can come to summer camp, where our campers are seven to 17 years old, and they get to meet other children that have the same illness that they have during that week at camp. Same thing happens for our parents and siblings on the family retreat weekends. So that's kind of the long and the short of it. Jennifer never lived to see our gates open, uh, but one little girl's vision and impact of a week at camp has created this same thing time and time again, and all of you are a part of that, and that's really what I want you to hear today, how grateful we are, because this is not mine or Kimmy's or Tom's, this is yours, and all the families who come here, you have helped serve. So please know we are incredibly grateful. We are a nonprofit, so we raise $5 million a year. 
None of that is government funding. That is all individual donors. Some of them give us large gifts. Some people give us $10 gifts a year. It doesn't matter, it all adds up. It costs us, our sponsorship for a camper is about $2,500 for a camper or for a family on a family retreat weekend. Our cost is significantly higher than that, quite frankly, but that's our sponsorship amount to send a kid to camp or to send a family to a family retreat weekend. Um, and we have on staff our own doctor and our own nursing director who has a specialty in oncology and endocrinology. Why is it medically safe? Because in the summer, when all the children have heart disease, pediatric cardiologists are volunteering their time to be here. We welcome them to bring their families because we cannot have, let's say, a 10-year-old who has had seven or eight heart attacks come through the gates of camp if we don't have those cardiologists here to make sure they're safe in the event that they have a coronary. And we're, when we get to the patch, that will come to life a little bit. When they get here, they get to their cabins, they get grouped together with kids their age, and they start going to all the different activities. We're not gonna be able to see all of them today, but we've got a theater, and we've got a swimming pool, and we've got arts and crafts, and we've got a gym. You guys saw the beautiful lake. That's where we do boating and fishing. We have a very important rule at our fishing, probably unique, you may never have heard of it, except for those who have been here before. That's our kiss and release program. That's where you catch a fish and you kiss a fish and you throw it back in. And we do that because we are about, where's the word? Kindness. And we want all the fish to know that it's okay to get caught at Camp Boggy Creek because we are all about kindness. Okay? Um, so let me talk about the building we're standing in, which is our dining hall. And yes, of course, that's where we eat. We go to this window and we pick up trays of food, both in the summer and on the family retreat weekend. And it's chicken nuggets and hot dogs and pizza and bratwurst and all those things that might be camp foods, except for those that have special dietary requirements, obviously, and we have a lot of children who do, and parents who do. And our chef works on those special meals that then get delivered out to the table where everybody's eating. When everybody's done eating, they head over to this window and that's where they put their dishes away. So how do we begin to change a child's life? It can be something as simple as allowing a child who maybe at home isn't asked to do chores, maybe they're not asked to set the table, maybe they're not burdened with having to pitch in and do the dishes, right? Because they're fragile and they're sick and they don't know how long their time with them may be. But it can't. Everybody's just like them. So we need everybody to set the table and do the dishes. So while riding a horse in our horse barn is clearly empowering, some of those beautiful things that we will see from a child will start to happen in this room when they go over and they pick up the silverware and they take it to their table and then they start to put the plates out and they say, can I get you anything? Oh, you want the ketchup? Let me help you. Because maybe they're not doing that at home. And those are the little things that begin to happen throughout the week that allow that child to no longer be defined by their illness, but realize, maybe I can try different things. Maybe I can do more than I thought before I came here. And you know what? You understand what that's like, because you've been down that same road, and look at everything you're doing. So that's kind of what happens in the summer. During a family retreat weekend, when the families are sitting here and they're eating those chicken nuggets and those pizza and that hot dogs, they're also sitting next to a mom or dad that is somewhere on Cabin Row and their kids have pals to go have all the fun. So if I'm hooked up with you and I wanna have a conversation, we can do that. We can share a cup of coffee and go sit in one of those rocking chairs and talk about things. And we even have scheduled time for parents to do their own uh, arts and crafts and things like that, but really it's about those conversations that we might have about that shared common thread of illness. So, so that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes of all those fun activities. Um, and it's very intentional. Everything we do is fun and is functional. So what questions do you guys have, if any, at this juncture in our meeting? Yes? Do you have any connection to the Paul Newman camp up in Connecticut? We do. The question is, do we have any connection to the Paul Newman camp in Connecticut that is called Hole in the Wall? Right. Um, we were the third camp to be created uh, under the vision of Paul Newman. And when I say that, Paul Newman's vision was children who can't go, quote unquote, raise a little hell, get the opportunity to do that at one I'm of these camps. Make it so we knew. Okay. Um, when Camp Boggy Creek came online, there was a line of people, quite frankly, much like our founders, 
who wanted to build camps. And Paul Newman's people said, if you're gonna loan your name to these, let's create some standards so that you know your legacy will live on long after you do and it will be the way you want it. And so we are a member of what's known as the Serious Fun, uh, I say it slow so I don't screw it up, uh, camps. And if you Google Serious Fun camps, you will see there are camps all over the world. We are connected in uh, standards that we have to meet, in the way that we do things, we help each other with things, but we are all also autonomous in our fundraising, in our getting campers, in who and how we serve them. Um, and uh, we all have our own boards, our own CEOs, so, so we're separate. And actually most nonprofits function this way. It's just usually the mothership and the chapter have the same name, but almost every nonprofit functions exactly this way. So yes, we kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Any other questions? Can you tell them about the hula hoop? The, the hula hoop. The, the, what is that giant yarny dream catchery thing? Uh, that is the web of kindness. So one of the things that we really want everybody to do, uh, to each other as staff, to camper to camper, staff to camper, is be kind. Um, and so one of the ways that we're kind is by saying thank you to people. Like I want to thank all of you today. So what happens, uh, it happens on family retreat weekends as well as during the summer, is that hoop gets pulled off the wall and we make an announcement, because that's a sound booth, that under the sea thing, that's a sound booth. We play music, all kinds of stuff. So we make an announcement and we say, hey, anybody that wants to say thank you, come on up, take the microphone and thank your friends. And so I may say, thank you for kissing my fish. <laughs> thank you for letting me have the purple boggy bear when you really wanted the purple boggy bear. Um, and as we are saying thank you, counselors wrap yarn around the web of kindness. And if you're a peanut sized camper, which happens sometimes, we can lift you up and that shows you that kindness lifts you up. So it's sort of a visual reflection of Fun. being grateful. Isn't that the coolest That's thing? That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, we also have, and I have two strings around here, tumbleweeds, which some of you I think know about and have actually made. Uh, tumbleweeds look exactly like tumbleweeds. They are uh, a pom pom. Not it's like a pom pom. Oh, wait, I think I'm making one. Hang on. Almost broke. So here's the way a tumbleweed works, and thank you for those who are making them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the way a tumbleweed works, hey, come on in. Um, Hi, I'm Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Mm -hmm. Come and have a seat. So everybody gets a tumbleweed. And the way a tumbleweed works is much like the web of kindness. It's a way of saying thank you and you did something really nice. And it may not have even been for me. It may be me saying thank you for doing something nice for Billy. Like I saw that, I saw you being kind. And so when you see someone being kind, you take your piece of yarn and you hand it to them. And remember they're wearing one as well, much like me with my keys and then they will tie it around the neckline. I got two over the family retreat weekend, so I tied them on my keys because I didn't have a tumbleweed. Um, and so when you see someone with their neckline filled with tumbleweed yarn, you know people have been acknowledging their you kindness. You only got two? I only got two. <laughs> but I was only here for an hour. Oh, oh so. all right, there you go. <laughs> with the gentleman who was doing our CPR training. So. So that's a tumbleweed in another way that we promote kindness because we want our campers to learn that before they go home, how to say thank you, how to be kind. We want our summer staff and our volunteers to have that same element with them. And when we get to the cabin, I'll tell you guys a story that is a beautiful story about kindness that a group of our young camper girls had. What other questions? I feel like, you know, Angelina Jolie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay, let's. You also, and here's a little boy. Oh, that's for you. That's a second one. That's nice. I love it. That's a second one. I think that's a boy. That's a good one. Yeah. A lot of people do it in the car instead of, you know. I don't think she has hair like Cher. <laughs> oh, thank you, so Thank you. That is so super kind. Cool. So, uh, I'll keep you posted on my progress. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be using all of the things as a part. Thank you. Six months. Okay, I'll put it on my calendar. <laughs>
retreat weekend we'll have at least one specialist along with our doctor and then a few nurses who volunteer their time because their parents are That's exactly what happens. Um, I'll go ahead and, and get started. So welcome to Cabin Row. So we were on Main Street and we passed by our wood shop, our arts and crafts, and our gym, by the way. Um, and then we took the shortcut uh, to Cabin Row. And there are a lot of paths that cut across because like I said, our campers walk everywhere on camp. Um, and they're usually shaded like the one that we walked on. Every cabin is identical to this one. We have 16 cabins like this, and then we have other cabins that like volunteers and some of our staff will stay in um, that have a little bit more room because they may be here for uh, all summer long. Um, so I'm gonna talk about summertime first. So in the summertime, after you check in at the patch, mom and dad or guardian wave bye-bye, and then you come to your cabin, and that's when you're gonna meet your uh, counselors for the first time. Two of them will be paid summer staff members. The rest will be volunteers that are here just for that week. Our goal is a two to one ratio of two children to one counselor during the week. ACA standards are three to one. Our goal, because our campers are ill, is two to one. So, I'll be very honest. If we don't get enough volunteers and we don't get enough summer staff, we turn campers away. So, if you know anybody looking for a summer job, we always need them. If you know anybody that wants to come and volunteer for a week, it will totally change their lives, I guarantee you. Please, let them know we're here uh, because we don't wanna have to turn kids away and that's ultimately what happens. Um, so once a camper comes through the door where Tom is standing, they come in and if they're the first camper, their eyes are huge and they're like, oh my gosh, I love yellow, I love Snoopy, this is my bed. Um, now they can mix up the bears and Afghans as well, first come, first serve, right? Uh, eventually 10 to 12 children will be on this side. They will unpack their belongings in these open crates. And one of the reasons they're open is that affords our counselors that invisible opportunity to notice, oh, maybe they don't have a lot. Oh, maybe they don't have a bathing suit. Oh, maybe they don't have the toothbrush. And we'll make sure it just magically appears. We try never to uh, give attention to any of that. Once all the kids are here, they create their cabin rules, and they are kids, though our counselors are steering them towards things like, make sure we turn the lights off, let's try to make our beds, let's leave the bathroom clean. They will also have some of their own creative rules, like don't make too much noise when you're sleeping because you might wake everyone up, uh, <laughs> whatever their rules are. And then they all sign them and then they post them. Um, they also make a list of the chores that they will need to do. And again, remember, riding a horse Sure, that's empowerment, that's really visual, but also knowing that today I'm responsible to make sure the bathroom's clean, and I go and clean the toilets, and I sweep the floor, and I'm eight years old, and I have cancer. Again, you begin to redefine your life just in a natural, beautiful way, and everybody else is doing chores. It's not like you're the only one doing it. Um, and you have fun, like, oh my gosh, I'm responsible for something. Kids want to help, they really do. It's the magic phrase we have here. How do you get a nine-year-old who's hot and cranky in August and tired and sick of it in the summer to do something for you, say, hey, can you do me a favor? And that child's walls will all come down because they just want to help you. Um, I told you I would tell a story of kindness when we got to the cabin. So last summer I was giving a tour, came into this cabin because we always use this cabin for our tours and Allie, who is now a full-time staff member, was a cabin counselor and she happened to be in here and I was like, hey Allie, Tell us a story about summer. And she's like, okay, I can tell you a story about kindness. And the story she told, that particular week, all the children had cancer. One little girl was in a wheelchair, only one. And when they were sitting down making their rules, one of these little seven or eight year old girls, all on her own said, 
Well, they've already told us kindness is really important, so shouldn't we have a rule about kindness? And they created two very important rules for their week here. One was none of them would ever walk in front of the young lady in the wheelchair so that she was always leading the way. And the other was that they would take turns pushing her in the wheelchair, so they all got a turn to help her. They did that all on their own only after being here for a few hours. I mean, and, and to think of what happens after five or six days is amazing. And it's organic. It happens for our counselors and it happens for our kids. Um, so while everything is intentional and fun, those are the kinds of things that they take home, right? And now they're different. Like our parents said, they come home a different child. Um, so uh, the other thing kids will do in the cabin is they'll sit in the circle at night before they go to bed and we do cabin chats. And that's an opportunity for kids to kind of talk about their day, uh, things and adventures that they had, things that they did for the very first time, things that maybe didn't go so well, maybe they ended up in the patch because they didn't drink enough water. Um, and ultimately those conversations will come around to whatever their illness is. And again, it happens organically. Our counselors just sit back and listen. Um, but they may talk about the kind of heart surgery they've had because maybe yours is different than mine. Um, they may talk about where they go to the hospital and their doctor, especially when you get into the older campers who really have a better grasp of, of the severity of their illness, quite frankly. Um, I had a camper dad tell me once that um, his daughter would do tours with me. And I said, you know, I'm always careful when Whitney's with me, Whitney was 13, not to not to talk about the really negative side. And he said, don't worry about it. She understands what dying is because she knows that that was in front of her a few years ago. Um, so you forget that because unless there's some visual scar when they're here at camp and they're helping set the table or they're making a the bed or they're pushing a wheelchair, you forget that they're really, really sick kids. Um, so on family retreat weekends, what happens is there's a family on this side and a family on that side. That's where the counselors are in the summer. We have a wooden door that closes and we slide that door closed, although families tell us within a few hours they've got the door open and everybody's one big happy family on a family retreat weekend. And um, sometimes we intentionally put families next to each other because we know this mom and dad are further down the road than this mom and dad. So when they're sitting on that shared porch together, maybe that's the conversation they're gonna have while their kids are off uh, boating and fishing. When um, I came to camp this weekend and only got my two uh, things, I met a mom at the coffee uh, stand and I was like, how's your weekend going? And she literally started to cry and she told me that um, it was a beautiful weekend, that her son is so overly attached to her and her husband, that all the kids have heart disease uh, the weekend that just passed, so overly attached to them that she worries about him. He's like eight years old. And in the morning, on Saturday morning, at 7.30, he was dressed and standing at the door looking for his pal. And uh, she was like, where are you going? She's like, I'm going fishing. He's like, I'm going fishing. I'll see you guys later. And she was so thrilled that he felt that independent to go do that. Amazing. Another fun cabin story I want to tell you, uh, and then I'll be done talking and we can take some questions. Um, and this just happened recently. We had um, a young man apply for a summer job, and he was a former camper. So now that he's going to be a counselor, right, he kind of gets a peek behind the tent. So he gets like, these are all the expectations. These are all the things you're going to do. These are all the things that will happen. And he's like, wait a minute. So as a child, when he was a camper here, um, he thought, gosh, you know, one of my counselors is just constantly forgetting things in the cabin. Because in the morning, all the 12 or 15 kids head out the front door with the staff and the volunteers. And at some point, right before they hit cabin row, a counselor will go, oh, I forgot. I forgot something. I forgot my doll. I gotta go back and get it. And they come in and what they're doing is checking to see if any uh, child has wet the bed. Because we don't want to point that out to anybody. So we just magically change the sheets and not a word is said and then that counselor catches up and he said i thought my counselors were just really forgetful <laughs> i had no idea they were doing these magical things behind the scenes that i i and and that's the intentional fun uh kind way of leading without forcing 
right? And, and making everybody feel inclusive. So that was a great story about a camper who was like, oh, now I see what's behind the tent. <laughs> and now I get to be that person and know the powerful impact that that has for the kids. So uh, last summer, almost half of our counselors were former campers. So oh, that's awesome. It is. It's amazing. It can create its own challenges because they have an illness. But um, for a child to be able to look up at that 19 or 20 year old and know, oh, you have sickle cell and you've been dealing with that, and I have sickle cell, and what, how do you handle crisis? You know, it, it's amazing. Yeah, that really helps everybody. So, what questions do you guys have? I have no questions. I'm from Lynn, Florida, which is Marion County. Okay. Right. And I live in Alachua County, which is High Springs, Florida. And tell us how you how you learned about Camp Rocky Creek. Well, it, it kind of started from my mom. Um, I grew up in Williston, Florida, which is just a county over um, from Alachua County. It's Levy County. And my mom is part of a women's group, the Women's Club. And for two years, like one year she came and she said, I crochet. She said, will you make me a couple of blankets? I was like, of course. So I made her some blankets. And then the next year she said, can you make me a couple more blankets? And I said, who are you making these blankets for? I'm thinking, you know, who's having babies? And um, she says, it's part of my women's group. We make gift bags for children at Boggy Creek. And I was like, wow. So I called. Some of them, I called Lynette, one of my YouTube friends, because I have a YouTube channel, and I told her about it, because we are a yarn community, and it's a big platform. It's bigger than you could ever imagine, and it's a wonderful community. It's a lot of um, women that are homebound, and they crochet, and this gives them purpose. But anyways, my, my, I went and researched, you know, the blankets are for these kids and it's this type of camp for chronically ill children. And so the ladies here that are here today, we got together, um, Billy, the Crafty Floridian on YouTube, we used her platform because she had a big platform to decide to make blankets, the community made blankets for this camp. And we've done it two years in a row. And last year we had 300, 370 blankets. And this year is our second year, and we collected 1,090. Um, it's amazing. It, the, the love. And you know, these, the women that are making these blankets are thanking us for letting them be a part of it. It gives them purpose, and it also is a gift for the children that's handmade, and it's from somebody's heart. It, it just, it's, it's wonderful. And I couldn't ask for a better group of friends to help me head this out. How about you? Well, my involvement is through Nancy. Um, when she put out the word last year to do blankets, um, I didn't know what Boggy Creek was, but through her and uh, Lynette and Billy, we kind of got the sense of it. And they came last year out here and did their tour. And Nancy posted some videos of the tour and I was like, I have to figure out a way to be involved in this because the camp is amazing and what they're doing in the meantime is amazing. So I figured they're already doing blankets, but shipping is expensive. So I asked my followers, and I have a way smaller channel than they have, um, if they wanted to just send me a couple of granny squares and then I would take those granny squares and make them into a blanket. That kind of blew up in my face. I didn't realize uh, what a giving community this is. And these women and men um, sent me close to 5,000 granny squares. <laughs> I was able to make uh, 32 blankets this year um, just with the donated squares. So, yeah, it was all because of Nancy and her mom. It's amazing. Yeah. How did it feel when you both walked in here and saw? It's amazing. I got teary. I can teary yeah. every time I come here. It, it, you, you look just at this. listening to the stories. Yep. Of just, the little girl that just, why can't we have a camp in Florida? I mean, and it, and it happened. It's just sad that she couldn't be here. You look at but these. She's here in spirit, I'm sure. These blankets that somebody has spent their time to create, and 
so lovingly put on these beds by somebody here who cares. And it's it's just, it's one of those things that just makes your heart swell. It's, it's amazing. It'll take her a day to process this. It took me a week. <laughs> yeah, it'll, no, it'll take me a long time because it's, I, I've said this before, it's horrible that you have to have a camp, but it's also a blessing that there is a place for these these children and these families mm -hmm. to come and that people spend time to lovingly stitch this yarn together to make something for a memory for these children. And it's just, it's, I'm a small part and it just, it's, it's amazing. It's the community out there that's mm -hmm. the big part of it. Mm -hmm. We're just the glue. What would you like to say to other um, potential quilters that would like to, to be a part of this? Do it. Yeah. Do Come it. Come join us. Come join us. If you are a quilter or a knitter or a crocheter or have any desire to make a little impact, um, it, this is worth it. It makes a big impact on the children. Yeah. Look at these cabins. It, it, it's, a, it's an amazing thing and it will fill your heart with so much gratitude for mm -hmm. the healthy children in your life when you're so lucky or even if you have children that are sick that you can help another family get through what they're getting through. Yeah. We actually have a friend that's, that we're YouTubers. We have a yarn channel in case you're wondering. No, what's, your, what's your channel? Tell it's, she's got yarn too. And um, they rescued me. You know, it's the channel is just, it's a wonderful community. And they're all about giving. And that's what I love about them. We all give to one another in one way or another, even if it's just a phone call. You know, so because a lot of the women and gentlemen are home, you know, they, they can't get around. So this this is incredible. They're so happy. You got to read the letters, and I didn't bring them. I wish I had, mm -hmm. but maybe I can take pictures of them and send them. But they're amazing. <laughs> just the gratitude, just to be a part of it. And it's not just local. I mean, Nancy and I are local, but Lynette is from Ohio, Billy's from Sarasota, Florida, but we've received blankets and squares from the UK, the UK uh, Canada, it, Canada uh, oh, my brain just went offline Australia. here for a second, Australia, um, as far as oh, Alaska, I yeah. mean, all, I think every state in the country has been represented at some point send a blanket or some squares. So our my channel's small compared to Nancy and Lynette and Billy's, but we have a far reach and it just it keeps spreading and growing and it's just it amazes we want me it to continue to grow. That oh, there's so many caring people out there that are willing to spend their time, their money, their talents for such an amazing place. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to share? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good with that. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Just uh, we were talking about it outside, but um, can you talk about 2025 and your goal, uh, Ben? Uh, 2025. Well, jokingly, we have said our goal for 2025 is 25, 2025 blankets. Um, we we like to double it. Yeah. We doubled last year's. We more than double. some, and so you know we could just keep doubling it. That would be amazing. Yeah. We'll have to rent. We'll have to use one of my door trucks. <laughs> we rented a U-Haul this year, so it was amazing. Last year we had um, two SUVs to deliver, you know, full of blankets. This year we had to rent a trailer, a U-Haul trailer. Yeah. So yeah, the more the merrier. Everybody's welcome. All blankets are welcome. Because if they're not the right size, we'll find. They'll use them here for the sure, physicians something. or the nurses. Cause they stay here too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And the quilts. Miss Billy made a quilt. I can't wait to see that hanging on the wall next year. So, but yeah. That was excellent. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Amazing. Here it is. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 she got gifts. Yeah. I think it's your birthday. Yeah. She said it was. It's sweet. your birthday. Oh, oh, that oh, that's oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. They're together. Oh. The condo is on Cinnamon Beach. Cinnamon Beach. <laughs> yeah, you could be 43 again. <laughs>
Oh, I love but that. I'm in Florida, so I don't know. I can be Because that was a great year, you said. 43 was your best year, so you're very welcome. Central Florida. I'm Eastern Mary. I know. It wasn't about having to go find it was about wanting to. I hope you like it, because I know you ordered one. I'm about four to five miles to the Lake County line in Marion County, so I'm north well, open east, it. southeast Marion County. What's the town? Lake Marion. <laughs> oh, I'm going to turn it over. The, 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 the crosses. Like I said, what did you do that for? Do you love it? I love it. It's it, yeah, it's one piece, isn't it gorgeous? Isn't it gorgeous, Bree's husband? Somebody made this. Oh wow! Yes, one of our Zoom sisters, her husband made that. Wow. Is that his, did he do that uh, laser printing or the uh, cutting? The cutting. I think he cut it. Cut? cut that one. I think cut it. Yeah. It's amazing. I got the body. Is it that amazing? It's beautiful. It's really gorgeous. You know that is really special. Can I hold it? I don't know. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't drop it. Oh, Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Woo A pelican! Oh, it's beautiful! Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> and then you have your. Uh...